In this video, I'll be tearing down this little power adapter. It's a 5 volt USB power adapter. It came with a audio analog to digital converter. And what that does is you have a, an audio input in and then out you have fiber optic out and on the other end you would have a, a digital to analog converter which then plugs into your speakers and the reason I have that is because my computer is actually in the basement so having the long wire up I was getting all sorts of interference so now with this digital it's a little bit better and the reason my computer is in the basement is because I actually have a Linux machine and then a Windows machine so it was just easier to have those two boxes in the basement than to have them at my feet I just, I just didn't have room and it was too hot and too noisy in the office but anyway that's a whole other story so yeah so I bought this so I bought this analog to digital converter and the adapter that came with it is just a piece of crap when I went to plug in the analog to digital converter it didn't work it just made this really horrible sound and then if I played music or anything the sound just got even worse and after a little bit of troubleshooting I found out it was the adapter's fault so now what I suspect is going on here is the ripple current of this thing is probably so horrible that's not being filtered out probably and it was probably causing the the converter to kind of screw around basically screw up so i'm going to go ahead and take this apart now the cable that comes with it it was just like a regular barrel jack i figured i probably don't have a use for that cable so instead of trying to probe inside here with the oscilloscope i just cut the wire and the first thing i noticed when i cut the wire it's freaking thin i'm going to show you a comparison so i don't know if you see that but that is the wire now the red one, I kind of twisted it a little bit. The other one, I was kind of trying to basically bunch it up so I could add a bit of solder just to get it straight. Because this wire is super thin and super weak. Now you'll notice right here, that's a hair. Yes, that's one of my hairs. It just happened to fall out. And it gives a really good comparison just to see. I mean, this wire is maybe twice as thick as my hair. And I mean, that's... I mean, that's kind of bad. I mean, that's supposed to be carrying current. Just to show how thin this wire is. So the problem might not even be the ripple current. It might actually be the wire is just so thin. It was probably losing so much voltage by the time it gets to the converter. But I'm not sure yet. We'll find out. So I'm going to go, go ahead and plug this in. And try not to short those wires. So the first thing I want to do is just test the voltage. Just make sure that's actually getting the proper voltage. So it's plugged in. All right, so I'm getting about 5.2 volts, which is actually not bad. I mean, it's actually good that it's a little bit more than just five because then they kind of account for a voltage drop. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the oscilloscope. Two volts per division. So, I mean, I should expect the line to be around here. And let's turn it on and see what happens. And that's not looking good. Why am I not getting a reading? Oh, I forgot to plug in the probe. There we go. So five volts per division and I already ha I have a little bit of voltage. That is very strange. Let's unplug this and see what happens. Is it maybe a capacitor or something? Yeah, so there's like I guess that might be it. There might be just a capacitor and it's just taking a while discharge or something. That's really strange. Well, anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on anyway. Now, keep in mind, this is with no load. I bet you if I put a load on this thing, it's going to be like horrible. I'm going to go ahead and put a 10 ohm resistor across this. This might get hot, so I should probably use pliers. Basically, this is just to simulate a load. Yeah, look at that ripple. It's pretty horrible. Ooh, that smells pretty bad. Yeah. Whew. Okay, so, but you saw that ripple. Now, I don't know what that converter is rated at, but this right now would have been drawing around 500 milliamps or so. And yeah, even idle, like, there's a lot of ripple in there. The converter is actually downstairs, so I'm actually gonna go check real quick how much that's actually rated. So it can kind of be a, a fair test. It turns out there's no rating on the box and I mean, I could hook up a multimeter and try to split the cable and try to measure it, but I decided not to bother. Let's just get right into it and tear this thing apart. Now it doesn't look like there's any way to really take this apart without breaking it. 
and I wasn't planning on keeping it anyway, so I'm just gonna go medieval on this and just basically break it. So what I'm expecting to find here is probably gonna be like a circuit, like these prongs are probably gonna be soldered to a circuit board, and it's probably gonna be a circuit board going right across and then a USB on the other side. That's pretty much what I'm thinking I'm gonna find here. It's probably gonna be a very simple power supply design, nothing too fancy. I don't really have any proper tools here for doing this sort of, this sort of thing. All my tools are in the basement, so as I feel I need a different tool, I'll go check what I got. Maybe we'll just dig into here. Oh, that's actually working. Okay, I see. So the plastic is just going to pop right off. Could probably get something in there to just pry it open. So I'm hoping I can just pop that right out. There you go. Oh, okay, so it's not what I thought. So. Oh, there you go. I'm in like Flynn. I zoom right in. I can't actually see the LCD when I'm looking at this, so. Need to make sure I'm actually in frame. Oh yeah, so these are just two little wires soldered in. And they look decently thick. I mean, this isn't gonna be a lot of current here. Like definitely under a nap on the 120 volt side. Oh, there's actually a transformer. This looks like a bridge rectifier. Not really gonna analyze the whole thing here. I'm just kind of showing it on camera. This would be the MOSFET that probably the, it basically chops up the AC wave. Well, first it'll be bridge rectified and then filter with a capacitor, which is a I, wow, I never heard that brand before. It's apparently Raw's certified, if you want to believe that or not. 105C rated. I don't even know what the capacity is on this. It doesn't even show. 2.2 microfarad. Because this is usually what fails. On these cheap power supplies, they use the cheapest capacitors you could probably find. So like this is guaranteed. It's whatever they can find on the Shenzhen market around the time they made this. But I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm not an expert at electronics by any means, so take everything with a grain of salt here, but this looks like half decent quality, like, you know, most, mostly through hole components, which is fine for a power supply. Actually, I think everything's through hole. I mean, probably a kid assembling this in China somewhere. So at least it went with through hole. SMD is kind of hard to do by hand. It's doable, but it's way easier. USB, yeah, everything's through hole. I wonder where the controller is. There should be some kind of controller that that would control like, the actual, because this would be a switch mode power supply. It's kind of strange, I don't see any controller unless this thing somehow does it. And then they're just using some kind of feedback. I guess that could be it too, because it's just, it's five volts out, that's it, right? So. Yeah, there must be some kind of feedback loop through the optocoupler and it tells it to change depending on the voltage. Because basically the AC side would be all the way here and then that's the DC side. So, yeah, see this is a little bit concerning. That's not a lot of clearance here because this is basically the high voltage side. This is the low voltage side. Yeah, I don't like the amount of clearance you got there. That I don't know if that's compliant or not. That's cutting it close. But anyway, so this is it. I mean, I wasn't planning on doing the full t full reverse engineering or something like that, but I'll probably take some pictures and then and pose them on the video for whoever wa decides they want to reverse engineering. So yeah, so this is pretty much it. This is actually my first time doing a teardown video like this. This is obviously not a big deal to tear down. Nothing all that crazy. Just noticed something funny here. They have like a little squiggly line here. Now on digital circuits you'll see this because if you have multiple pairs, especially on like computers and high frequency stuff, you actually want the pairs to be the same length. So like when you look on motherboards you'll actually see those squiggly lines and it actually matters. But this is just like AC going to the bridge rectifier. Yeah, I don't understand why they did that. That is actually pretty funny. I mean it looks like the resistor symbol but it's obviously not going to add a resistance. I mean it's just... 
It's not really going to add any inductance if that's what they were going for. I don't think that would add inductance whatsoever. Yeah, that's strange. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. That was just a basic teardown of a cheap Chinese parts supply.